Hello and welcome back to Budget Model Railways and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Creality K1 Speedy 3D printer kindly sent to us by Creality. This printer is by far the fastest and most advanced 3D printer I've ever had the opportunity of using and after using it for the past couple of months I'm really excited to share with you all of its features and just how fast it can truly print at a really really good quality as well. So let's take a look. Starting off with the design, I much prefer the dark grey colour scheme that Creality has gone for here. And the difference on this printer is that the door is actually made of tempered glass, which just makes it feel a little bit more premium. The side panels are still acrylic, but again, they look nicer with the darker grey. And you can still see the print going on, on the inside, thanks to the nice bright LED strip that illuminates the print bed. The top of the printer also has a large acrylic panel, which can also be removed depending on what filament you're printing to get the optimal internal temperature. Removing the top panel also shows us the filament tube and the power wires going into the hot end, which are neatly stored away inside this cable chain. Finishing off the design features, the screen is situated in the bottom right corner of the 3D printer, and it's a nice large full color four inch touchscreen display, which is really nice to see on a premium printer like this. The next thing to look at is how has Creality made this thing so fast? And that's done in a few ways. The first way is by adopting a Core XY design. Now, there's plenty of other videos on YouTube explaining what Core XY is, but basically it's just the most efficient way of using a combination of belts, pulleys and idler wheels in order to move the nozzle fastest with the least force against the motors. The other thing that Creality has done is swapped out your average 32mm stepper motors for some giant 60mm stepper motors, resulting in twice the torque per axis. And the most important thing when it comes to speed that I always go on about in every single 3D printer review is the part cooling. And I've got to hand it to Creality on this one. They have done an absolutely unbeatable job at the part cooling as well as having a nice large blower fan on the nozzle to directly cool the plastic coming straight out of the nozzle, they have placed a humongous blower fan on the side of the case here, which kicks out so much air over the printed part that it's cooling it down so unbelievably fast that you could basically print at 90 degree overhangs with no issue because that is how fast it is cooling the parts. It's, yeah, well done, Creality. The only issue with it is the noise. Just listen to this. Fortunately, this isn't that much of an issue because it kicks out so much air, you almost never have to run it at full speed. And I usually just run it around 25% and I'm getting perfect print quality on the overhangs. This leads us on to how noisy this printer is. Well, with the door open, you get around 70 decibels, which is pretty loud. But by the time you close the door, this drops to only 60, which is very much acceptable. The next thing I'd like to talk about is how clever this printer is. As well as having a filament runout sensor like almost every printer does this day, it uses a host of cameras and other sensors to use what it calls AI print detection. This basically monitors your print and sends notifications to your phone via the Creality app or displays a message on the printer screen if it thinks something isn't right. Now this can include anything from running out of filament. It also won't start a print if it detects that something is on the bed, like a foreign object or a print that was on there last time that you've forgotten to take off. And it also checks the quality of your print and if it sees something that isn't quite right, like your printer making spaghetti, it will again pause the print and notify you which is a really clever feature to have and definitely stops you from wasting time and filament. Bed leveling is also incredibly smart on this 3D printer and requires no user intervention. And unlike BL Touch, it actually works reliably. But this is done by using a series of strain gauges, effectively pressure sensors within the 3D printer bed itself. And the nozzle simply pushes down on the bed and when the sensor detects the nozzle there, it knows what height it was at, which is a much more reliable and foolproof system than using a BL Touch probe. And certainly in my experience, I've had absolutely no issue with bed leveling in the three or four months that I've been using this printer. The next thing I want to talk about is software. Now, when I first got this and I read that it had to use Creality's print software, I was a little bit nervous because I do like using Cura as its open source. However, for all of you that use Cura, Creality print software is literally a reskinned Cura. All of the settings are the same and the user interface is almost identical. But one of the main advantages of it is because it's been made by Creality 
for Creality printers, it supports Creality printers much better. One of the main advantages being that it can actually estimate print time accurately. It also supports the wireless printing features which you can see here, which means with a click of a button I can send it straight to the K1 without having to mess around with micro SD cards. It also has a really nice user interface here where you can see a camera view for the printer, you can monitor all the temps, you can select files from the printer to print onto it or files that you have stored in your account and send them all straight to the printer from your computer which is really helpful for me so that I don't have to be constantly running over to the printer and changing cards and remembering where I put the card that's got that file on. It's just all stored right here within the software. It also by default creates time lapses of everything you've ever 3D printed, which I think looks really cool to look at some of these prints. But you can of course turn this feature off if you don't want it taking up your storage. Taking a look at the print quality then, we can see that my usual benchmark, our Engage diesel shunter, is looking very nice indeed with all the fine detail. And I'll just point out that everything I'm showing here on the print quality was printed without any support material. So that just shows how the part cooling fan is really helping to make those overhangs as level as possible. So yeah, I'm really pleased with the high detail quality of the Engage diesel here. So let's take a look at something a little bit larger. These are some OO gauge wagon loads that I made for a container wagon. They're meant to be tunnel segments like they're currently doing for HS2. As you can see, I've got the painted and the unpainted version here. And the quality on these, once again, is really good. Honestly, very comparable to injection molding. There's almost no layer lines at all. Because the part cooling does a really good job of blending everything all together. And once again, it's just the part cooling. It does an amazing job at stopping it from stringing. Just making those overhangs nice and crisp on all the prints here. And finally, just to finish it off with something fun here, we've got a dragon coming out of an egg. Now, once again, there's a lot of overhangs on this print, especially behind the ears on the head, but they're all printed really well with very, very minimal stringing and very little bridging. So it's doing a really good job at these overhangs, which honestly is just, it makes the print look so much nicer when you've got these crisp overhangs and bridges that just don't have any sag to them whatsoever just makes the print look a lot cleaner. I'd just like to finish off by talking about the price of this 3D printer and just to show how far that 3D printing has come in the last six years. So six years ago when we purchased our first 3D printer, it was one of the original Creality Ender 2s. Now at the time, this was probably one of the best hobbyist entry level 3D printers that you could purchase. It had almost no features at all compared to a modern day printer. No auto bed leveling, no smart features, it just sucked filament in and printed parts. It was simple and effective. But they cost us £250 per printer. At the moment on the Black Friday sale, the K1 is less than £400. That means that for just about one and a half times the amount of money as the most basic 3D printer six years ago, you can get the most advanced 3D printer currently on the market which is an absolute bargain. To finish off, I would say that this 3D printer is my favorite and the most excited I have got about a 3D printer since I bought my first ever 3D printer. It's really made me love 3D printing again and just the way that it is so fast, it's so agile and how well it prints at these speeds it's once again hypnotic and fascinating to watch after having been 3D printing for six years. I'm, I'm loving printing with this printer. So I would fully recommend the K1 to absolutely anyone, even all the way down to the entry level, never bought a 3D printer before, simply just because of how simple it is to use. You really can just plug it in, load up Creality software and print, and you're gonna come out with high quality prints every single time. I've never had this printer jam up on me. I've never had it fail a print. It's just been utterly reliable from the second I've plugged it in four months ago and it has printed for me non-stop every day since then without breaking anything, replacing anything. It has just been running fantastically. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please check out our link in the description from where you can purchase this video and do let us know if there's anything else you would like us to review in the future. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Budget Model Railways.